Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today's video, testing the 12 volt battery in a Prius. We're starting to get to that season where batteries will die and your Prius is like any other car, it has a 12 volt battery. So let's discuss how to test it and know the warning signs before you get stranded. Okay, well, so today's video, testing a 12-volt battery. Um, I went ahead and procured a Top Don BT100 to conduct this test, um, but I also want to show some warning signs of a failing 12-volt pack. Um, so I'll show what it looks like when we start the car as well here in a second. Um, so what we're going to be doing today is using this battery tester um, to test the 12-volt system. And for those who are not aware, in the 2010 Prius, the 12 volt battery is located in the rear of the car and on the passenger side um, in the United States. So that will be the, if you're looking at the car on that left side. Um, and you'll see here, so this is a 2010 Prius. It is currently 2021. Um, and I have a Toyota battery and I've never replaced this battery. And I purchased this car about three years ago, uh, back in 2019. And it had 30 some thousand miles at that point in time. So I'm not even sure if this is uh, the original battery or not. And Toyota does use AGM or a, um, absorbed glass mat for their 12 volt battery. It's only 325 amp, um, uh, 325 uh, CCA or cold cranking amps um, is what it's rated for. So um, that is where the battery is, where to locate it. It's 12 volt system, AGM, get to some of that here in a minute, uh, but let's get to some of the warning signs because it's starting to get colder and you may be seeing some of these in your own car. So I wanted to show those off as well. Okay, so we are inside the car and I'm gonna go ahead and start it. But first thing I wanna point out, I do have the lights on up here. Let me turn this flash off so we can get a sense. Um, so the, the lights are on. When I do start the car um, or you know the the brake booster kicks on those lights get a little bit dimmer That's not necessarily a sign, but it can be um, The big sign is when you try to start the car. So I got my foot on the brake I'm gonna hit the power button the dash lights go slightly dim and then they do kick on um, So it's not let us down uh, But I have noticed that this takes a little bit longer than in the past now that it's gotten a little bit colder with average daily temperatures closer to 60 with the mornings being in the 30s that when you try to start this, it takes a little bit longer for that dash to kick on. And when you do have battery troubles, I've noticed that the dash will flicker and it can lead to lots of assumptions that there's lots of other things wrong with your car, but that is not the case in the Prius. 12 volt system powers a lot of electronics. Actually, every electronic that isn't the 12 volt system um, is powered by the 12 volt system. So um, the hybrid battery is what charges the 12 volt system. So there is no um, alternator. So you don't need the engine running to charge that battery, which is a common misconception. Um, but in my case, whenever you start the car, like I said, that dash just takes a little bit longer for me and I'll actually power it on one more time while we watch these lights, they get dimmer and then they get brighter. So I noticed again, it got a little bit more significant here in the last couple of weeks as the temperatures drop. So let's go ahead and jump into how to test to see if the battery is bad with the tester that I have. Okay, so step one is making sure that you get the leads from the battery tester hooked into the battery. Um, and I will admit I had a little bit of trouble with this uh, just because these leads are not super large. They're not able to grip around that whole entire um, connector there. So I had to get to a spot where I could get a firm grip. And then same thing with the negative that got on a little bit better. But the first thing that you will notice is we do have a 12.08 volts showing, which those familiar with the 12 volt battery chemistry for AGM batteries will know that is a little bit low. So what I'm going to do, I need that flashlight back on so we can see what we're looking at. Um, I'm going to hit the menu button or that M at the top, and then I'm going to run a couple tests. First one I want to run is the battery test. So to get there, I'm just going to hit enter. I can cycle through the different modes using the arrow button, but I want to stay at battery test. Click enter, and we are using an AGM absorbed glass mat, and it is a flat plate. So we'll select that one. And then CCA is what we want. That's number one of 10, so I don't need to cycle through these other ones. Um, but CCA is cold cranking amps, so I'll hit enter. And then I'm going to reference my battery here, which you'll see is, you see 325A, and then in tiny print right here, you can see 
325 CCA. So you'll look at your battery to verify that that is correct. And then from there, you just hit enter and it will then test your battery. Now, if you hit enter and you see um, check connector um, or check connections, that's telling you that you have to adjust your connections here. All right, so it looks like here that the, the battery is dying. It says healthy, 48%. Charge is only at 12%, but this car was driven today um, and is driven just about daily. So uh, this is about what I expected, um, and I'm going to see if I can revive it by putting it on a trickle charger for a couple weeks to see if that is able to dissolve some of those um, some of the items that are on top of the, the plates within the battery. So we'll see what that can do to see if it can revive it. I'm going to do a follow-up to see if that does the, that is able to revive the battery. Um, but that is the battery test, just giving you the healthy rating, how many uh, cranking amps you're able to pull from it, the current charge based on the voltage alone, and then internal resistance as well. Something I've done here is <clears throat> went ahead and charged the 12 volt battery. Um, and then I let it sit for about a week um, through normal driving conditions just to rule out the fact that maybe my battery is not fully, uh, has not been fully charged. Who knows what's happened? I typically drive it every every day uh, throughout the week and it doesn't sit longer than 24 hours without being driven. So uh, just to rule that out as a factor. So I'm going to do another test. It's 12.34 volts currently. And we're going to do a battery test. And we need to do a AGM flat plate. Same as before, same. Uh, we're gonna drop our CCAs down to 325. And if you hold the button, it will go a little bit faster here. All right, 325, enter. It will do our test. And hopefully this time it doesn't say battery's dying. We'll do a quick check to see what we have here. So, uh, healthy is up to 54, charge at 55. It does say battery is dying still. Um, so this would indicate to me that I probably can't hold a full charge. You'll see my CCA's cold cranking amps is only testing at 239. Uh, with this rated at 325, what I'm planning on doing now is probably putting this on a pulse charger. And a pulse charger is really just a battery maintainer slash charger. Um, in this case, it has the repair mode, which in, it should uh, get rid of some sulfication on the inside of the battery plates. Uh, really, just by pulsing electricity um, and kind of dissolving the sulfication that is on the plates. So that's my plan. I'll report back in a second video here to see uh, my results. But obviously, the 12.34 uh, volts that my 12 volt is now sitting at, um, or 12.33 at this point, is better than before. And it has been a little bit better on the inside of the car. I'm not having any issues with the, the starting still now that we're in the middle of December. I'll go back to the main menu and we're going to do a cranking test. Um, so this does mean that you have to go in and start the car. So I'll hit enter. It'll give me 30 seconds to start the engine. So we'll walk around the car here. Put on the brake. Enter or power. Car started. Walk back around the end here. And we see... Time, uh, 1.3 seconds, need to replace or no need to replace. Let's see what it says here. Voltage is 12.5, no need to replace. Prius is a little different um, when it starts the car as well. Um, you are going to be pulling less cranking amps than starting or turning over a V6 four-cylinder um, or even a V8 because, of course, um, we're only turning on some inverters. So that's not super surprising to me. Um, and then charging test. I'm expecting this to go well as well. So we got to start the engine, of course. We just turned it off. And then we will hit enter. So we'll start her back up. All right. Then it's going to test the charging system here when I hit enter. So it's doing a ripple test. Then it's going to apply a load. And then it's going to compare how different the voltages are between when it's on a load and not. Um, now this right here, we obviously can't do in the Prius. Increase RPM to 2500 because we don't have an alternator. Um, it's just simply going to be charging from the inverter. So I'm going to hit enter to step through this. If you have a normal ICE internal combustion engine car that idles and does have an alternator, you can do that. 
So we have on a load, 14.8. Not on a load, we're at 14.83. Uh, that is pretty impressive. Um, so excellent generator performance. Nothing wrong there. And then you can review your data in the review data tab here. So there's our first battery test. Now I can hit enter. There's our cranking test and our charging test. So something else I wanted to show. So I have right here in front of you a deep cycle marine battery that I use for um, my boat, um, specifically for the um, trolling motor. So something that I, I need to do is pull it out of the boat and make sure that these are in good condition as well. So given that this is more of a traditional chemistry of sealed lead acid, um, wanted to give this a test with the battery tester as well. So it's currently connected. You can see we're at 12.88 volts. Um, and the process to test this one is identical. Um, we can use the M menu button to then cycle through the battery test. And again, this is regular flooded. And then cold cranking amps. This is going to be more than 325, so I'm going to use arrow up. Um, and you can look on your battery to see what your rating is at. And this one is clearly at 650 CCA. So we'll grab that. Um, sometimes batteries do have different values on them, like cranking amps um, at, you know, not cold cranking amps. So make sure you look for CCA when you're putting it into the tester here. So we need to go up to 650. And to do that, I'm going to hold until we get there here. All right, we have 650 cold cranking amps. I'm going to use the enter button. It's going to run a quick test. We're going to see the health of our battery here. All right, our green light for good has lit up. We are seeing 100% healthy, 806 cold cranking amps. Um, in this case, that's going to be higher because we are obviously not at zero degrees. 650 is what we'd expect at zero. So um, we are seeing that. It is charged to 100%. Internal resistance, 3.72. Uh, and then we have our rated uh, cold cranking amps in there as well. So it's telling me that's a good battery. So um, a couple tests you can't do unless you're hooked up to a car is the cranking test and charging test as we've already seen. Um, but really nice that you can review your data, have it saved. Um, neat little tool for getting all of your winterization of batteries completed. Um, certainly works good for all of my vehicles um, and something that I'm going to add obviously to my checklist as we winterize things and get them set up uh, and hibernating for the winter. That will conclude our test today um, with the Top Don uh, BT100 battery tester. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave those in the comments. Or if you'd like anything specific tested with this tester, uh, feel free to let me know. Um, and I can go ahead and get that test rolling for you. Um, I will probably do a follow-up with my sand-colored Prius here to see if we can revive that AGM battery rather than have to purchase a new one. Um, so I have a separate video and idea lined up for that. Um, so I'll follow up with that one. Um, but otherwise, go ahead and like if you like this video. If you'd like to see anything like it, go ahead and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one.